Now let's use our brand new skills to complete a classic animation exercise. First off, I'm going to create a circle, turn it white, and I'll move it into the center. Then I'm going to tap Y and move the origin down to the bottom center, and tap Y again. Now I'm going to draw another circle, change it to black, call this shadow, and move it below the other circle, and I'll call this one ball. Then I can move the shadow into place underneath the ball. Now I'm going to put both of these layers into a group, and I'll call the group root. Then I can move the root down near the bottom center. Okay, let's start animating. The first step is of course to open our timeline, and I'm going to change it to a loop. Next I'm going to open the root group, and highlight the ball, and then go over here and set a Y position keyframe for the ball. Then I'm going to move forward to frame 20, and create another Y position keyframe up here. Then I'm going to move forward to frame 40, and copy and paste the first keyframe. I can tap U to show all existing keyframes. Next I'm going to move the playhead to the beginning again, highlight the shadow, and I'm going to animate the shadow's scale and I'm going to make sure that these are linked. So now I'll move the playhead to frame 20, and I'll change the scale down to 60%. Then I'll move the playhead to frame 40, and I'll copy and paste this first scale keyframe. So when I press play, the animation looks like this. Awesome. Now let's add some interpolation. And what I'm going to do is add the exact same interpolation to the position and the scale. So for this first set of keyframes, I'm going to go over here and set the interpolation to cubic, and as you know the default setting for cubic starts off slow, speeds up, and then slows down. We don't want this. When a ball launches off the ground it starts off fast, and slows down as it gets to its highest point. So we need to change the shape of this interpolation curve to something like this. It starts off fast, and slows down. Next I'm going to highlight this set of keyframes, which is when the ball is at its highest point, and is about to reverse direction and fall towards the floor. So I'll set the interpolation to cubic once again, but we'll do the opposite shape. We'll start off slow, and then speed up. Now the animation looks like this. The final thing we're going to do is add some squash and stretch to the ball, and we're going to do this by animating its scale properties and we're going to need to animate the X and Y scale properties separately, so don't forget to unlink them like this. Next I'm going to go down to the timeline, and because the ball is launching itself off of the floor, I'm going to make it skinnier, so 80%, and taller by the same amount, so add 20%. Next I'm going to go forward to frame 10, and change these numbers back to 100% each. And now let's go forward to the final frame where the ball is just touching the floor again. And we're going to stretch the ball out to the same amount as it was at the beginning. And of course now that the ball is touching the floor on this frame, the impact of hitting the floor means that it will probably squash down like this, and then on the last frame it will probably stretch back up like this. I'm just going to nudge these keyframes between this set of keyframes and this set of keyframes, so everything is equal. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, that looks good, but the scale is moving a little bit too robotically, so we can actually add some interpolation to the scale keyframes as well. First of all, I'm going to set these to be cubic, let's go through this logically, what is the reason that the ball is scaling from this size to this size? Well, it's basically because the ball is overstretched at this point. So naturally it wants to return to its original size, 100% by 100%. And the way that a ball would probably return to its normal size is just a, a standard ease. Next up, let's go through the logic of why the ball would resize from this 100% to 
to this being stretched up. And that reason is probably the inertia of falling is stretching it out. So currently this set of keyframes is linear, but instead of that, I think that we should make it this so that it slowly stretches and gets faster as it moves towards the ground. And then the moment that it hits the ground, I think that we should set these to change quickly down to a squash. And then we can change these to change slowly back up to a stretch. So now if we press play, awesome. And of course you can play around with the timing to make this ball more characterful. You can mess around with the numbers to make it seem like a different kind of ball, you know. A bowling ball isn't going to squash and stretch as much as a golf ball, for instance, or a tennis ball. So just play around with the property values, play around with the timing, and try to have fun with it. After all, this is animation.